Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, we're hanging out a little bit in the VAB today because uh, we're going to make some changes to the Artemis. Uh, this was formerly the Artemis 2. We are now going to be upgrading it to the Artemis 3 and getting it ready for its uh, next set of missions, which hopefully will uh, take us to a mission to at least orbit Mars, although uh, hopefully we'll be able to make a landing as well. But I've decided to kind of do the mission constellation style. We're not going to go all in one big launch because that... Um, which is a little beyond our technical reach at the moment. So we're going to try to do it in phases, at least with uh, at least two, maybe four launches, depending on the scope of the mission. So the first thing I want to do is uh, refit this uh, Artemis 2 to an Artemis 3 and give it the capability to at least uh, get home from Mars, hopefully with a, a little help on its own, but we'll... We'll see where it carries us. So anyway, I'm probably going to speed through this and then record a, a little bit of a voiceover. So I'll pick you guys up in just a few seconds. So first thing uh, we're going to do is change some of our fuel types around and maybe adjust some of our thruster placement. Uh, docking has always been a thing with the Artemis. So I'm going to include some very heavy duty thrusters uh, just to make sure that we can orient ourselves properly and also Increasing the size of our life support tank. You know, we should also probably top the fuel off in that bottom tank a little bit. There we go. And we're going to expand our primary fuel tank to um, kind of deal with the Delta V issues. Uh, really, this uh, service propulsion system is going to be needed mostly to get ourselves back from Mars to Earth. Uh, we're probably going to have some help on that front. Uh, this is recorded way, way in post, and I've done a lot of other things since then, so you'll kind of be seeing more of the plan come together as I uh, cut together some more of these video, or these uh, build episodes. That's the word I'm looking for. Sorry. All right, and yeah, just taking a quick look around, I think that's going to do us a little bit better, um, trying to get our center of mass lined up there, and also trying to get... Uh, thruster placement things still sorted out. All right, and we'll reattach our DN5B because we've got a couple of things that we need to be doing down here. Obviously, start off with a docking port because this is going to be a very, very modular mission. Um, so, <laughs> trying to stay within tonnage requirements and delta Vs and all these other nice things. Um, I did have some issues trying to decide what exactly to do here kind of making this whole plan up as I go, which is uh, a little weird, but I've actually never done a uh, crewed Mars mission before. So this is, like most of this series, is me just kind of learning and figuring it out. So of course I'm always open to suggestions, if you want to leave them for me in the comments, I always appreciate them. But uh, this was my kind of... well I can't really even call it a first round draft, because I've been experimenting with uh, Project uh, Iron Sands at Project Iron Dust in the background for quite a while, but never really got anything together that I felt was worthy of sharing with the world. It was mostly just a bunch of crap. <laughs> so this is my first attempt at it not being a bunch of crap, <laughs> if that makes any real sense at all. But yeah, what I'm building down here is kind of like a uh, support service module. Uh, it's going to give the crew not only space to move around, but a little bit of an extension on the life support carried by the Artemis itself. Um, so, uh, like I said, the whole thing being modular means that we can leave parts behind, give us extra room to fuel things up as we go along. So all of that coinciding with the mission uh, as needed, etc., etc. I guess you can kind of get a feel for what I'm trying to do here, is just to give them a space to really live and... I don't know, not be crammed in that capsule, but we'll kind of touch on that a little bit later. But uh, a lot of this is, yeah, me just trying to decide what exactly to do with this and how exactly I wanted to put it together and how much I could wedge into this and still stay under our tonnage limit. So I, even though this footage is sped up a whole lot, it's uh, really kind of moving quite slowly because a lot of it was just me leaning back in my chair and going, all right, now what? Is this what I'm trying to accomplish? Are these even on straight? I'm sure any of you who've played KSP for any length of time can kind of sh share in that feeling of, oh geez, what the hell am I doing? But, <clears throat> right, so uh, we've got the primary module and the uh, 
two inflatable habitats on there. So we're just going to get some of these lateral tanks installed. It's nice to have things that you can ditch as you're going so that you can uh, decrease your total weight. But you know, when you're running with one primary engine, every time you can shed some weight midway through does help your your Delta V stats out uh, quite a bit. So it's that's kind of my philosophy there, although it's uh, not exactly uh, solid at this point. And again, just uh, trying to match volumes and deal with uh, kind of our tonnage. But we'll get more into the grand scheme, the grand plan of things uh, as we're progressing through. I've got a couple more of these uh, build episodes and test things that uh, I'm going to be putting together shortly to share with you guys. But really, I think I'm okay with this design so far. I'm just going to get painted and get it ready and uh, kind of call it a nice first round draft. We'll obviously be getting into some testing, but more on that later. So back to old me. All right, well, um, I think this is our... Uh, prime candidate here that we can go ahead and start putting to testing, the uh, Artemis 3 M-1. Um, really its only job is going to be to ride to Mars uh, off the back of this uh, S4B upper stage. At least it'll make that transfer, it'll pick up its little life support slash habitation bubble thing, which is kind of a uh, very cheap way of doing this, but it just gives them some room to move around so that they can our carbonots aren't wedged into that uh, tiny capsule this entire time for their many, many days trip. Uh, when they get to Mars, they'll have to rendezvous with like a core space station thing that will replenish their life support, uh, give them a little more room to move around, some science experiments to do, uh, things of that nature. Um, oh, KIS struts. I did not see those before. Those must be kind of new. Very interesting. Also, the uh, heat shield that they'll use to uh, take care of some of their braking into the Mars atmosphere. But we're hoping that the station that will be waiting for them in Mars orbit will be able to refuel the spaceship. Um, recharge their batteries if they need it. I don't think they will. Give them science experiments and stuff to do. But um, its main job there will be like a, a fuel depot for life support supplies and uh, fuel for our main engine, which... Apparently does not have a maximum rated burn time. This is something I did not know and am quite overjoyed about. And actually, since I extended that bottom tank, I can tuck this back up a little bit and kind of clean up those lines some. There we go. That looks much, much better. Um, so yeah, sorry, this is going to be a, a very quick turbo episode. Maybe we'll go check in on our Mars rover, or maybe I will build uh, some of the other components for this mission. But uh, I'm pretty happy with this. A uh, hefty price tag, though. 151000 for something we don't even have a contract to do. Where did I put that fairing? Let's get that back in. And, of course, it's going aloft on a uh, uh, DN5B. Yeah. Those should reshape themselves nicely. Excellent. So, let's pull this back up into a launchable configuration that is above ground. Make sure we're not towering or clipping into the ground. There we go. Save. That's super important. All right, and it looks like we're getting uh, 5,100 meters per second out of our uh, S4B stage. We can probably up that a little bit. Um, this, yeah, let me make sure it's stage five. Yeah, there it is. These numbers are inaccurate because the rocket needs to be fueled on the pad. Uh, we will also lock that because we, we need to. That 5,100 meters per second is uh, a lot more than we were getting when we had the lunar lander down here, because obviously it's a lot heavier, but the Artemis itself is a bit heavier this round. Um, didn't need to scrape too much tonnage off. Uh, I, I think I made a note of it in the comments of a previous video that the 5B here can throw about 160 tons to low Earth orbit. It can throw 75 tons at the moon. So if we can cut this down to about, I don't know, I'm completely off the top of my head guesstimation number, 55 to 60 tons, we should have no real problem hurling that uh, 55 to 60 tons at Mars. 
which is uh, ideal for what we're trying to do, especially at a multi-launch crewed, uh, at least Mars orbital mission. Uh, we'll hope to expand on it depending on what we can accomplish from our launcher. There's a random strut uh, attaching itself to the launch clamp. That can't be good. Interesting. We'll just uh, reconfigure those right quick. Yeah, that's a little better. Anyway, so uh, that's going to do it for at least this section. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys next time. Sorry for the very quick build episode. It's finals week. You know how it goes. Anyway, but uh, I'll see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Or Mars. You know, whichever. Anyway, uh, I was able to put in uh, about two hours worth of drive time on faithful old Emrov, who is still here just uh, mightily trucking away. Um, now, about two hours closer to his destination of the uh, South Pole biome. Really, I think it's just uh, Mars Poles biome uh, region. There's still a, a little more than a day of uh, driving that being 24 hours of continuous motion left to do on this little guy before he actually gets to where he's going, but he's making fantastic progress. Uh, I did have to uh, redo the uh, waypoints for him, because apparently in the massively zoomed out mode, there's a little spin out there. No big deal. Recovered just fine. He's on his way. Anyway, apparently the old waypoint setup had him driving uh, right off a cliff. Uh, I... I caught it just in time. It was really one of those times where you're really cursing the fact that the uh, brakes are on the signal delay, but steering and everything else is not. So I was able to steer him around uh, the cliff and give him a, a solid set of directions to not pile over it, explode, and die. But just so you all know, he's still out there, he's still trekking along, and he's still doing uh, quite well, radioing things in occasionally as he goes, but still a long way off. But that is actually going to do it for this episode, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out, I do appreciate it, and I'll see all of you in the next one. So, until then, see you later.